In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please kneel if you are able. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. You open your hand. You satisfy the desires of every living thing. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. <laughs> Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose, and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, through chapter 5, verse 2. This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God 
as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that any, anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, 
and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We've all experienced a deal that is just too good to be true. The email that claims that a long lost relative has died and has left you over $1 million. When you get to the end, you read this. 
To receive your inheritance, you must pay a small attorney's fee of $500. Just $500 to receive over a million? And then human reason kicks in. Why haven't I ever heard of this relative? And why did the e email originate in Nigeria? <laughs> Sounds too good to be true. Human reason tells us it's not true. Well, that's how the Jews heard Jesus that day. In the Gospels today, they heard Jesus say, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Yeah, right. There's a lot of people in this world, Jesus. And you're saying whoever comes to you, which means all who come to you, even if it's the whole world, you're going to feed them? You'll care for them? You, one of the poorest people in the city, you're going to just take out that money bag of yours, right, and produce that kind of cash. And then Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Again, the human reason alarm goes off. You're not only going to give life now, but you're going to give eternal life as well. Who do you think you are? Moses, the greatest prophet, died. Abraham died. In fact, all the great prophets died. Your own father died. But you come down, you came down from heaven? Is that what you're claiming? Are you not from Nazareth, not from Mary and Joseph? And you say you can give the life of heaven, really? Except he could. He had built an impressive resume, not only having just fed the 5,000, but the healings, the exorcisms, so many. His power over nature, controlling wind and wave. He was consistently being challenged, and he consistently met every challenge. His teachings amazed all who heard him and befuddled those who challenged him. And now he was doing it again. Amazing, outrageous, and challenging words. Words like, the likes of which had never been uttered before. No wonder they had trouble understanding. As do we, let's be honest. When what Jesus says challenges what we think, when his words challenge the status quo, when his truth is so different from what the world says is true, when he promises what seems impossible, like what he said today about being the living bread from heaven, about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, we can struggle with that as well. Our sinful nature pushes back with doubts and wonders. And some Christians flat out deny what he said here today. It can't be true, it's just not reasonable. So Jesus got pushed back that day in Capernaum. And by the end of the day, all but the 12 apparently had left shaking their heads. It can't be true. You see, they knew hunger and they knew thirst. They knew life and they certainly knew death. How could these things simply go away? And they knew Jesus, they knew his parents. How could he say he came down from heaven? How could he claim God as his father? And then they saw him die on a cross. And that proved it. He can't give life. 
he can't even save his own life. And then he did. As impressive as his miracles were, the Jews were right. It would have meant nothing had Jesus not risen from the grave. That empty tomb and that living body and blood of Jesus makes all the difference in the world. Raising himself up is the ultimate proof that he can deliver. And he will deliver. Whoever comes to him will never hunger. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life. The manna in the wilderness and the bread and the fish that fed the 5,000 sustained life until death. But the bread of Jesus, the bread from heaven, sustains life through death so that our tombs will be empty as well, your tombs and mine. So if you want life, don't go to Moses or to anyone else. Don't go to the law or to human reason or to anyone who says there's a list of things you must do to get to heaven. The life you need, only Jesus can give. Come to me, Jesus says. So we do. We come to him in faith when we are led to repent when we hear or receive God's word, when we bring our children to be baptized, when we come to his table to eat his body and to drink his blood, and he sustains us in this one true faith until we arrive in heaven. Unfortunately, there's always a part of us that wants to turn away from him. You know it. You can feel it. When in our weird, sinful, spiritually schizophrenic uh, life, we turn to him one moment, and then in the next, we turn away. When we do one thing Sunday morning, and then something else during the week. When we turn to other things that we think will give us life, or the kind of life we think we want. Or when we're swayed away from God's truth by what the world says is better. And oh, this too, those times when we are afraid not to sin. That's right, I said when we're afraid not to sin because that happens as well. When we're afraid that if I do not sin, if I do not do this thing, if I do not go along, I will lose friends. I will lose this pleasure. I will lose this thing. I will lose this promotion. I will lose this life that I have worked so hard to achieve. So you sin because you're afraid not to sin. You sin because you think your life is in your hands. You're in control. So you disbelieve the promises of Jesus. You sin and what do you get? <laughs> what do you get? That's kind of, that's the kind of life like the hurdles in the Olympic track meet that maybe you've been watching this past week. Except that there's no end to that race there's always another hurdle to clear. So you kept your friends until the next thing they want you to do. You receive some pleasure. You got that thing you wanted until the next thing comes along. You cleared that hurdle and then you see another. Oh no, there's another after that. Always another until you wear out, fall down and die. That's sin. That's what sin does. It keeps moving the bar, setting up another hurdle, demanding more. And so too with Moses and the law that the Jews kept looking to to save them. There's no end to that race either. There's always another sacrifice you've got to make, 
always more good works you have to do, always more prayers to pray, always striving to have a doubt-free, perfect faith. You're always striving, but you're never arriving. There's no finish line because the finish line for eternal life is perfection, and guess what? You can't reach that. You've already dropped the baton and you've been disqualified from the race. But that first Easter morning, Jesus cleared the final hurdle, the hurdle of death at the finish of the race, a race he didn't need to run. He didn't need to be there, but which he came and ran for us to get us to the finish line with him. Therefore, the life you need, he has for you. So come to me, he says. Rely on me. Believe in me. And even though sin will always remain part of the Christian's flesh and life, Jesus sees to it that it does not harm us. Though we stumble, he forgives. Though we turn away from him, he does not turn away from us. He would never do that. Though we die, yet shall we live. That is his promise. That is his gift to you. He is that kind of bread that can give this kind of life. That's why Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will not cast out. It's why he did not say, whoever does not sin, I will not cast out. you notice that? You see, he came for sinners and called sinners to himself. The Jews wanted him to cast out those sinners from his presence. They were offended when he hung around with them and ate with them, these people of ill repute. But he insisted. He came for people like you and me. He came to forgive and give life. That's his promise. The danger of sin is that turning to it, we may turn away from our Lord. Little by little, turning to sin more and more and turning to Christ less and less, drifting away, being seduced, believing falsehoods until we have cast ourselves out of his kingdom. You may have experienced this. I did in my 20s. I just walked away. And that sin leads to death. It can even appear to be good. That's right, sin can appear to be good. It's not always ugly. Sin that brings the world's accolades to you. Sin that creates the facade of piety, pretending to be righteous in front of other people, denouncing others for not being godly enough, showing others how charitable you are, how much, how much, how lovable you are, while inside there's this broken, fearful heart in need of a life that only Christ can give. Come to me, Jesus says. I will give it to you. I will speak it in your ears. I will pour it on your heads. I will put it in your mouths. As often as you come, it will never run out. When you're thirsty, I will give you drink. When you are hungry, I will feed you. When you're dying, I will give you life. So come to me, and you did. You came with your sins, with your fear, with your failures, with all the times you turned away and fell on your face this week, with your weakness, your doubts, your troubles, your brokenness, with your troubled marriage, your strained friendships, your disobedience, with all the hurdles you've knocked over this week trying to run that race with your questions about the future and your worries about your children, with your worries about yourself. And you've come to the right place. Here, here is the bread of life. 
the bread you need for the life you need. Feed on his forgiveness. Feed on his word. Feed on his promises. Feed on his body and blood and, and leave knowing that whatever you came in here with stays here and dies here. With Jesus, you can be assured of that. And know this, you leave here with his freedom and his life. That's a promise that is 100% guaranteed. For whoever comes to me, I will never cast out, he said. It's so completely true. And it really is true what the psalmist said. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are able, please kneel for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the bread of life, giving eternal life to all who come to him. By your Holy Spirit, lead the whole church on earth to imitate you and walk in your love as beloved children. Lord, in your mercy, give strength and courage to all pastors and those who assist them, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression. Hearten them by the example of Elijah and the prophets and apostles before them. Comfort them through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Especially we pray for the family and friends of Christopher. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, through holy baptism, you have joined the faithful together as your children making us brothers in your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us grace to believe that through Christ we belong to one another. Lead us to put away all falsehood and malice and instead to speak Christ's truth to one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, bless all families and homes that are one generation may tell to the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Show kindness to those who suffer in the body, especially Caitlin, Karen, Boyd, Sarah, Amber, Lynette, David, George, Dale, Amy, Matthew, Chelsea, Betty, Deborah. Never let them be in doubt that you hear their prayers, receive all pain, Re excuse me, relieve all pain and provide for those who suffer from any kind of hardship. Lord, in your mercy, grant thankfulness for your divine providence to all who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, especially Colleen, Joseph, James, Charles, Jean, Michelle, John, Sabrina, Luke, Haley, Kelly, Marcus, Paisley, Thomas, Alicia, Alan, Christina, Richard, and Lisa, Donald and Lynette, Lord in your mercy. Bless those who commune this day that reconciled to each other in Christ's body and blood, they may rejoice to receive your forgiveness through this precious gift, be strengthened in times of doubt, and be nourished in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be the bread of life. Together with all the faithful who have gone before us, we give you thanks and praise. Keep us steadfast in the faith so that when our last hour comes, 
we may rejoice with them at the marriage feast in his kingdom, which has no end. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, join together in praying the prayer that our Lord himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the new testament of my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you, that of your mercy, that you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God's blessings to you this day. Uh, we have, I have some announcements here. Uh, there's going to be a funeral for Walt Barr. Uh, it'll be held on August 17th at 10.30 a.m. right here. A reception will follow in the fellowship area. Also, Pastor Solomon's adult information class begins Thursday, September 5th at 6.30 p.m. Please invite your unchurched uh, neighbors, family, friends, I find it, it's very helpful if you'll invite them and say, I'll, I'll join you, I'll come with you to this class. Um, that's really a, a big comfort to many people. So please consider doing that as well. Are there any other announcements? Anything we should highlight? Yes. Oh, for the pictures. Yeah. Um, I, I, they're going on right now, is that correct? Or do you sign, you sign up in the Narthex area? Okay, at the table. So if you haven't had your photo taken, um, please sign up. Um, I think this is happening this week then, or? Okay, okay, whenever you sign up, okay. Any other announcements? If not, our closing hymn, Almighty Father, bless the word. <laughs> 